Kings of the North, they've done it! Canada is going to the World Cup! With Canada playing in their first World Cup match in 36 years, it's the perfect time for Can Explains the FIFA World Cup. Let's start with the basics. Bring in the chalkboard. The FIFA World Cup is the biggest soccer tournament in the world. FIFA is the organization that oversees most of international soccer and puts on the tournament. Teams from nations from around the globe come together to compete for this gold trophy. FIFA currently recognizes 211 national teams and qualification for the cup starts up to three years in advance. There are six regions that all compete to qualify called continental zones. Each zone is given a certain number of spots in the tournament called bursts. These guarantee that teams from all over the world will be able to compete. The host automatically gets a spot in the tournament. For this year's tournament in Qatar, 32 teams are competing. And for the first time since 1986, Canada is one of them. Five billion people are expected to tune in. So yeah, it's a big deal. The first World Cup was in 1930 in Uruguay. 13 teams competed. It took a break for World War II, but it's gone on every four years since 1950. The tournament was created to spread the sport of soccer around the world. Today, soccer, which is known as football outside of North America, is one of the most popular sports in the world. There's no continent, I think, in which the World Cup in particular isn't watched. This time for Africa. I think FIFA's ideal view of itself is that soccer, the world game, stands above politics. The World Cup has huge um, political importance, I would say. Sport is often used by countries as a very important means of soft power, basically as a way to make the country look better on the world stage. Picture this. In 1954, the World Cup final was West Germany versus Hungary. Hungary was favored to win, but West Germany won. That was a big deal for a country that was still recovering from losing World War II. The players went home national heroes and it created a new sense of pride for their nation. Fast forward to 2005 when Ivory Coast beat Sudan to qualify for the 2006 World Cup. The win and a speech made by star player Didier Drogba is credited to helping bring an end to civil war in their country. And those are just two of many examples. 1954 was the first time the tournament was on television and it reached new heights in the 1970s with the introduction of color tv it means the world cup can be watched anywhere and anytime as well that can mean watching from home in pubs or at big public viewings the world cup is a community event with victory celebrations flooding into the street <laughs> The World Cup's global popularity also comes with a lot of criticism. For one, FIFA, as an organization, has a long history of corruption. And certain decisions have been questioned, like holding this year's tournament in Qatar. It's not the first time the event has been held in a country that's known for brutal human rights violations. There was a, a, a really rather violent political regime in charge of Argentina at the time, and questions were asked then, you know, shouldn't FIFA and other organizations take note of what is happening here? And that's just scratching the surface of FIFA World Cup-related controversy. Like in 2015, when there was a big corruption scandal, it's centered around bribery and fraud. Most of FIFA's leadership was removed from office. Some of them were sent to prison, and most of them were barred for life from having any office in soccer again. Despite all its problems, which are not small, the World Cup is only set to grow in size and influence. So, what's next? In 2026, the men's tournament is heading to North America. For the first time, three countries will co-host the Cup, and Canada is one of them. 
along with the US and Mexico. Well, that's it for Can Explains. I'm Abigail Dove and I'll see you later.